Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 228 of Category 5 Technology TV. So nice to have you here. It's Tuesday, January the 31st. Pretty wild. 2012, almost February. February, as we might say en français. En français. <laughs> en de français. Don't know That's how what we say yeah. here in Canada. Yeah. Yes, we do. I'm just getting Chris Reich a little tipsy. That's all. <laughs> That's all I <I'm> <laughs> So good to have you here. Uh, tonight we are going to be looking at a very, very cool technology. I was showing you just yeah. before the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's I'm called excited. SmartNav. It comes to us from a company called Natural Point. If you have any kind of issues as far as repetitive stress injury that, you know, ah, it hurts to use my <laughs> mouse. I'm clicking and clicking and clicking and ow, every time it hurts. And I click a million times a day. Well, here's your chance to mm -hmm. uh, kind of avoid some of that repetitive stress injury with the SmartNav device. Stick around. You're going to find out all about how you control your computer with your head. Ooh, what does that even mean? Well, you will find out. You'll find out. <laughs> you will also find out some of the rad things happening in the world of tech news. For instance, some of the big tech companies are going to work together to fight phishing. But not this kind. When that it would be weird. <laughs> That'd be wild. <laughs> you, there, with the rod! <laughs> Additionally, when the expected sophisticated missile attack comes, the United Kingdom intends to be ready. Mm. Microsoft Office 15 is in technical preview. And lastly, Twitter can block your tweets based on country. Hmm. Stick around because these stories are coming up later in the show. Dave Maydu says that's fishing with a PH, like the kids say. <laughs> like the kids, like PH fat. <laughs> yes. Oh, Brilliant. I like it. Nice to see you, Dave Maydew. <laughs> Michael, Iowa. I made a note on your notepad yes. because somebody is, uh, well, we've got lots of people joining us in the chat room. We'd encourage you to join us. Because mm -hmm. the chat room is where it's at. Uh, we have a fabulous community of viewers that get together and, and chit chat about life and also technology. But we just want to give a little shout out currently to Keith Heaton. It's his first time live, but he's been watching for a very long time. Keith so, Heaton. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We in should the chat really, room. we should have like a Keith Heaton jingle. Okay. Like, oh, Keith my Heaton, welcome to our chat room. No, he's joining <laughs> us for the first time live, but it says he's been watching for a long, long yeah, time which, through our website, which is cool. Which is very cool. So you are a true blue fan. Nice to have you here. <laughs> and if you're new here, let us know. Say in the chat room where you're from and uh, how long you've been watching. Uh, also, uh, for people like Keith Heaton who uh, watches through our website, mm -hmm. one of the cool enhancements that were added to our website. I know it sounds strange because YouTube has been around for the longest time. But for the longest time, Category 5, we've kind of, we've held back a little bit mm -hmm. on our YouTube involvement because of the fact that, yeah, it's a third party and we try to house everything ourselves. Yes. But there comes a point in growth where you say, you know what, it's time to start using some of these third party services mm -hmm. that are owned by Google that have way more bandwidth <laughs> and way more money. True. Anyways, YouTube is offering a very excellent way for for us to embed our on-demand videos mm. so you'll notice that with episode number 226 and episode number 227 on our website at category5.tv you'll see that they're actually going to be loading through youtube and that gives you the ability to switch cool. between different uh, versions of the show as far as mm. the quality goes so you can bump it right up to 720p if you'd like uh, or you can crank it back if you've got a slower connection. You can easily, in the player, actually s scale it back to uh, lesser bandwidth. Mm. But what's really cool is it gives us the ability to, you can actually scan throughout the timeline of the show. Right, A yes. lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, it's a tough thing with streaming video because, you know, it's it's always been a challenge for us because we're hosting our video elsewhere and the player here. Yes. So this gives us, you a chance to skip over everything that I'm saying right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> or skip ahead to a part that you are really super interested in that Robbie is bringing home this excellent point and you're just exactly. dying to see it or watch it again and again and All again. All the live viewers are looking right? at the timeline trying right? to figure out how they can <laughs> skip over this. But if you're watching live, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. We don't know how to fast forward time. Well, time yet. travel is, uh, is in the works, but uh, <laughs> we have not accomplished that just yet. Not quite, not quite. Not quite yet. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so YouTube, we can watch the show on YouTube, but also yeah. what's the deal with the, the mobile site? Our mobile site is mobile.cat5.tv. So, oh, that was cool. I kind of have oh, like a QR name. head. <laughs> That'll be my new nickname. If you go to our website, mobile.cat5.tv, you'll actually get this really cool kind of app looking thing and you can put it right on the dashboard of your Ooh, iPod okay, touch, your iPhone, that. your Android device, whatever it is. And you're actually able to stream category five, not only live, to your device, but also you'll be able to uh, stream the show after the fact. So again, mm. on-demand video is available to you on this device. So there's last week's episode. Cool. And of course, if I wanted to, I could also bring up Watch Live and then we could create some kind of wild be feedback. Like watching us, watching us. Yeah, that would be us. so weird. <laughs> Speaking of time travel. Whoa. Anyways, if you've just, got one of these kind of devices. My head mobile.cat5.tv you see it there and uh, we would love to have you check out that on your mobile device please do we have a reach on this show that is just it's amazing to me because we really have a viewership that is global mm -hmm. um, GWG was saying that he was flying over the ocean and he was watching the show what? through the mobile website that's cool so I was kind of you know just, is that going to put a pin in our Google map that's just like out in the middle of the ocean and Maybe. one day somebody's going to be looking over there on our map and say well what on earth is that yeah and that's GWG up in the airplane that is right there wild right there in the middle of the ocean I like that yeah that's really cool but we also encourage our viewers to send in their postcards. We do, because we love to hear about the, the world around us. We do. And speaking of postcards... You know what I love? I love seeing pictures of where you're from. Exactly. You know, we're, we're so secluded in our little three-by-three three cubicle studio. Here in Barrie, Ontario. Beautiful city, <laughs> but we see it every day. We do. So we want to we see your city. But what, yeah, what we don't see every day is the celebration on the Centennial Bridge Whoa. in... Um, Illinois. So we said yes, yeah. Illinois. Mississippi River between Rock Island, Illinois and Davenport, Iowa. And this lovely little piece of literature comes to us from Agamotto. Hey, Agamotto. Thanks. Hello, Cat5 crew. Here is a pic of one of my favorite places to walk in the, in the Quad Cities. It's only surviving... I'm sorry... It's, oh, it's, sorry, it's the only surviving pedestrian accessible bridge I know of that crosses the Mississippi River. We are also um, the home of, <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel like I need glasses. It's not your writing, it's me. Um, we are also the home... <laughs> Of I'll, I'll be honest here. Multiple. Agamotto. I'm just, I'm just, I don't mean to interrupt because I'll let you pick it up. I can oh. see that the postal workers had wet fingers. Yeah, it's a little smudged. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not he's, trying to botch your like message. It's like a uh, like a marker, and the and the it's smudged. Yeah, but it's a little. Uh, it's it's not my fault. Robbie can attest to we this. We are also the home of multiple, multiple parades. parades and running events that cross into both, both Iowa, Iowa and, and Illinois. Illinois. And that's where the thumbprint is, right there. Yes, I'm sorry. You did an excellent penmanship. It's just there is smudge. But it's not your fault. But this photo is lovely. And this is your home and native land. And thank we you. salute you for sending that. So thank you. That's so There's cool. There's the stamp proof. Yes. Iowa or Illinois. Yes. That Those come from uh, USA. So just USA, USA all the way. And I can't, I can't even read the stamp. The postal workers with the stamp, they like smudge the stamp across. <laughs> but I believe you that this came from Illinois. Thank you. Yes, Agamotto. so thank you. 100 viewer points for you. Ooh, and we will la. be adding that to our beautiful wall, which I'm working on, mm -hmm. uh, to showcase all of the postcards that have come in. It's going to rock. What else we got? We've got some more mail cool. coming to us from the other side of the world. Dun, da, 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 in oh. Australia. Oh, Australia. This is a show about time travel. Time and world travel. Welcome to tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. Hey, this comes to us from uh, Rob Gore. Oh, hey, Rob. And we've got some pictures from Melbourne, Australia. Cool. 
some coastal photos of the Great Ocean Road. The Great Ocean Road is about a two and a half hour drive from the CBD in Melbourne, Victoria. So here's a photo of that world. Cool, beautiful place. Just love it. Some kangaroos saying hello Sweet. from Australia. Pretty rad. To all of you. And lastly, the pictures, um, to go through them from the top left, are uh, the Melbourne CBD, including Crown uh, Casino Flame Show, the Art Center Spire, followed by St. Paul's Cathedral, then we have Flinders Street Station, then the Bolt Bridge, the Yarra River, then Luna Park, then the cool. Dockland Stadium, the Melbourne Tram, and the Shrine of Remembrance. Look at that. We just right. did like a whirlwind tour of the city. Brilliant. Done. Thanks, Rob Gore. Thank you. Thank you for sending us. A hundred viewer points. A hundred. He sent us three postcards, well, What do we do in a situation like that? I'm all about giving out the points. He did send We're us We're going to start three. getting envelopes with like 60 different postcards. They People do the math and they'll realize that if they put it in an envelope, <laughs> it's cheaper. I guess you're right. <laughs> but they did take the time to shop Thanks, for these Rob cards. Gore. That's true. I that love the true. kangaroo one. We'll work it out in private after the show. And then we'll uh, we'll award I'm a certain for you. number of points. I'm an advocate for you. Although I have to say, I do love. There's something about getting a, a postcard with a stamp on it. That's true too. I gotta I gotta admit, Rob Gore. I mean, I. But, I'm but hold look on at this bad envelope. boy. What is it? Okay. It's a little koala That's stamp. Cool. We can hardly see it because it's a little out of focus. But, oh, there it is. Okay. There you go. Koala, koala. stamp. How cute is that? Very so cute. So I would invite you to send your viewer postcards. Really love receiving them. And again, we're putting together this brilliant wall. I'm putting together a, a web service that's going to have your postcard posted all over the map of the world. Um, so as these, uh, as we collect these, uh, those are going to be added to that. Hillary, if you could give out the uh, address there. Certainly. For to, send to. to send us your postcard, please make it out to Category 5 Technology TV, P.O. Box 29009, Barry, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. So. There you have it. There you got it. You got it. Write it down. And if you can't write it down, you can always get that on our website. If you, if you miss it, you're right like, oh, I don't have a pen. Oh, oh I didn't know. Oh. But if you have time travel and YouTube, you can rewind it. True say. You can pause it. <laughs> pause time. True. So make sure you get that down. Unpause time. Write that down. And send us a postcard. Excellent. We'll be um, right back. Yes, we After will. this. We will. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point of view HD video camera built directly into a high quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com You are watching Category 5 TV. I'm Hillary Rumble, but the man of the hour is Robbie Ferguson. And if you've got questions about anything tech or just want to chit-chat us up, visit our website at Category5.tv. Get in the chat room because that's where the party's at. And uh, yeah. Give us a shout out. And actually, I would like to give a shout out right now to Rick34637, who is new, joining us in the chat room for the first time. Hey, Rick34637. <laughs> Did I get it right? 34637. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Nice to have you here. Uh huh. Sure. We've got a ton of viewer questions, uh, well, a few, and we welcome them. We do. If you have a question for us, join us in the chat room, as uh, Hillary was saying. It's uh, Category 5 on Freenode, but you can also get there through our website or through live.cat5.tv. That's where it's that's at. That's a great way to get your questions in. We're here. Yeah. We are here to uh, help. Unless you're on YouTube, we're live. <laughs> but you could still Listen. email us your questions if you're watching oh, on yeah. YouTube. Live at Category5.tv. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you mentioned it, but there you go. There you have it. Live at Category5.tv gets to us. Mm -hmm. And I actually have an email right here. Excellent. Dun, da, da, da. Comes to us from Troy74. Hey, Troy74. Hey, Robbie. I recently dual booted my wife's laptop with Linux Mint 64 bit and Windows 7. Do we give out viewer points for that? For dual booting? For adding Linux to his wife's laptop. <laughs> we really should, shouldn't we? All right, Troy. 
You win. 20 viewer points <laughs> for helping convert the nation. Converting the wife. Starting with the wife. <laughs> to Linux. <laughs> Sorry. I know That's I hilarious. That's right, hilarious. Okay. It's all good. Okay, so Linux Mint 64 and Windows 7. One annoyance after doing so is the touchpad. Do oh. you know of any way to disable the touchpad completely? She uses an external mouse. I've used the settings in the mouse preferences to um, disable the touchpad while typing, but that has no effect. I have also installed the touchpad indicator and disable touchpad also, but to no effect. Do you know of another way to disable the touchpad functionality? Thank you for all the good knowledge you have provided us through your work on the show. Cheers. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Um, do you like cinnamon? Just, I do. do. You like cinnamon? Yeah. I like cinnamon. Yeah. There's a program. I only ask that because it <laughs> will help you to remember. <laughs> the name of the program is called Sin Damon. Okay. Sin Damon. Yeah. Sin Damon. S Y N Damon. It's all one word, I believe, but let's get on to the almighty Google machine. Google machine. S Y N D A E M O N. Carriage return. Huh. Let's see what happens. Sin Damon. There it is. Sin Damon is a program which monitors keyboard activity and disables the touchpad when? When the keyboard is being used. Hmm. It's automatic. It's a daemon. It runs in the background. It does its thing. And it says, oh, look, you're typing. I'm going to stop with the touchpad because that is the most annoying thing when you're working on a laptop. And I've even had people come in and say, well, there's something wrong with my laptop. Oh, no. I'm typing away and the mouse is moving all around and clicking. <laughs> they don't realize your palm is actually touching that little touchpad that's uh, on your screen. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Or that's on, on your, mm -hmm. uh, just below your keyboard, I should say. Yeah. So your palm is resting on that. Every time you lift your palm to push the space bar, it's clicking, 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 and it's going all over the place. So here's an opportunity for you to be able to disable that on Linux. It's called Sin Daemon. Cindy. Yeah, I'll post links in the show notes for episode number uh, 228. I'm going to see if it's actually available for you in Synaptic, though. Just yeah, well, just to check. see if it's real quick to install. Yeah. But the links that I'm going to give you, linuxcommand.org slash man underscore pages slash syndamon1. It's kind of long, but there it is. Okay, that's going to get you there. But it was the first result in Google, if you want to Google syndamon. Uh, but... What we want to see is, okay, well, how can we go about installing this? Sin Daemon. And will you look at that? It's already installed, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it came with this package, Synaptic's touchpad driver for X. So with this website, this has given you, well, it's the man pages, right? I mean, you can type man, Sin Daemon, get the same thing, but this is going to show you, you know, dash D, start as a daemon. Hmm. Not to be mistaken for a demon. True. It's not bad. <laughs> there, sorry, I thought I was showing you. Slash D. Dash D. All right. Cool. All right. Hope that helps. Thanks. Sounds like a good, easy fix. Mm. Hopefully it works. Indeed. Okay. I have another question coming to us from D-Man. 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 Or is it 810? He's 810. Is he D-Man 810 or D-Man 80 or something? I remember seeing it at 80, but Monsieur I must forget Denis. the one. In, <sighs> in our Canadian accent. We, um, okay. <laughs> One day I'm going to get so <laughs> in trouble with French My Canadians. Francophone. I don't speak French. He I tries. I pretend to say words with a French accent and people say that sounded like it was like some other something else accent. <laughs> i don't know i don't oh know what boy. it is anyways d man a10 says hey buddy robbie if you were to do a minimal backup backup bare minimum on a pc what would you what would you back up on win xp on ubuntu on mac thanks love the show a minimal backup minimal backup yes on a pc what i know would what he's asking up? i'm trying to think of a smart alec response like you know, like auto run dot cnf or something, but no, you you need you need the real answer. Okay, Windows XP. You you want to do a backup? You've got a Windows XP system. Most of your user files, regardless of what you have installed, but your documents, your pictures, everything okay, that yep. you import into mm -hmm. your computer, go into a folder on your system drive, which is usually your C colon drive. Yes. Uh, it's the folder is called Documents and Settings, and within that folder there are folders for each user. So mm -hmm. you might have C colon slash documents and settings slash 
Hillary. Yes. For example. Yep. And within that folder, you'll see my pictures or pictures, uh, mm -hmm. my documents, uh, and a bunch of other ones that could even potentially be hidden. So you might want to watch out for hidden folders like application data or local settings and things like that where, you know, things like your Outlook data stores are. So if you were to upload, uh, to back up using what's called volume shadow copy on Windows XP, because what that allows you to do is back up stuff even when, <laughs> even when it's in use, right? Oh. So you don't get permissions errors. Cobian okay. and Backup has that feature. It's free software for Windows XP. Um, you can check that out. I'll post links in the show notes, okay? Um, but that, w if you back up documents and settings, chances are pretty good you're backing up everything that you need. Your programs and stuff will be lost if you, if you lose your computer, but bare the, bones backup yeah. your documents and settings. If you want to go even more bare bones, it would be like documents and settings slash Hillary slash my pictures or pictures slash documents. You could do the individual folders, but watch out for things like application data slash Microsoft slash um, I think Outlook slash and then your, your data stores, right? Mm. Your PST files. So you want to find out where those are if you're using Outlook and things like that first. What are the other ones? Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Same sort of scenario. You've got a slash home folder. Linux is fantastic. I had a hard drive crash just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Seriously, when it happens and you're on Linux and you've got a good backup, you really realize how much better Linux is at doing stuff. Hmm. Um, if you back up your slash home folder, it's got all of your user folders, all of your files, your configuration, your bookmarks for Firefox. Everything is there, right? Um, so really, if you have that, you're not going to, there's no real potential to lose anything because the only stuff that's outside of slash home, because your user in Linux is only, you only have access to slash home slash Robbie slash Hillary. You can't go outside of that folder yeah. without root access or without pseudo access. So really, if you back that up, you're going to be just brilliant. Be sad. Yeah. I, I was, so I was saying I, I lost my hard drive. I reinstalled, I actually, I went from Ubuntu 11.04, mm -hmm. I installed Debian because I thought I would try Squeeze and we looked at it on the show a few weeks ago and it was really good. So, so I installed Squeeze and I moved my Ubuntu back up from my home folder. Not, not everything, right? You don't want to drag the whole, the whole folder, but know that that folder contains everything that you need. So I dragged my documents folder, mm -hmm. my, um, you know, my pictures my videos, my uh, configuration settings for uh, programs like FileZilla, which were in .FileZilla in my home folder, right? So copying that stuff over. And then the only semi-tricky thing was that I went into the Firefox folder. Squeeze has Ice Weasel. So it's Firefox, but they've renamed it. Yeah. So I took my, I went into my backup and I went into the .Mozilla slash Firefox slash profile and it's like a big long gibberish thing <laughs> and I just highlighted every file within that folder and dragged it into my new Ice Weasel profile. Yeah. It worked perfectly. I got all my passwords memorized. I've got all my favorites, everything, even my history. It's all there. Cool. So the only other thing you'd want to consider with Ubuntu or Linux is if you've got custom settings in your FS table, like slash etc slash FS tab, you might want to back that kind of stuff up just so that you don't have to refigure it out your network settings and things for connecting to network shares, NAS boxes and things. But otherwise, slash home is the way to go. Mac, I am not a Mac user, but I'll tell you, D-Man 810, uh, get into some of the Mac forums and, and get some help, um, and uh, they'll tell you. But uh, it's, it's a Unix-based operating system, very, very similar to Linux in its file system, so your slash home folder still exists, and I do believe that uh, it's going to be structured very much the same hmm. as your Linux system. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question, D-Man 810. Oh, yes, we I, do. I should add, just because uh, I know D-Man 810 didn't ask, but if you're on Windows 7 and you're wondering, okay, well, I don't have a Documents and Settings folder, in Windows 7 it's been called Users. Oh, okay. okay. So if you're using Windows 7 and you want to do a backup, that's where those folders are going to be found. Hmm. Good yeah. to know. Right on. I think we have time for one more question, do you think? I think so. Yeah. All right, let's get this in. This comes to us from Gizmo at Work. Gizmo at Work. <laughs> I know you're not watching because you're working, but it happens. Uh, in the future. <laughs> in the future. All this time travel is like messing with my head. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, team. I Literally, ran I've got a nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Um, I ran a defrag with Windows XP on a second hard drive that I have in my computer. As it was very slow, I stopped it before the end. I discovered then that some of the folders were not accessible anymore. Uh oh. I don't think they're lost because when I reboot, bleh, reboot with Windows XP, it runs CHKDSK. Check to scan. Yeah. So it's basically forcing it to scan the drive. Yes. Um, Problem. And then he goes on to say, oh, and I can see it um, pauses a lot on a lot of my lost files. But then my files are not recovered either. How can mm. I make Windows restore my files? Should I run a defrag and quietly wait until it's done? Thank you from your, for your help. Gizmo from freezing Montreal. <laughs> Sorry about all that French stuff that I was doing earlier. Just didn't so you know. mean it. Didn't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> but allow me to, uh, to try this. See vous play. Ah, uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Subtle. Yeah, defragging a hard drive and then just like canceling it, or, or it sounds like yeah. kind of forcefully stopping it. Yeah, force could closed. be bad news. I mean, this is sector by sector moving things around on your hard drive. Mm -hmm. Could be a problem. But what it sounds like is there could be problems with that hard drive. That's my biggest concern. Mm -hmm. Is that see doing something like a defrag you're doing a lot of sector by sector moving things around the heads are moving around if you've got a failing hard drive that could be it could l take that pending failure and turn it into a full-fledged hard drive crash so Ooh. make sure you've got a backup first and yes. foremost okay uh, you can use a, a Linux Live CD if you're having trouble booting that Windows system. Use Linux Live CD. You can mount that file system, plug in a USB drive, and copy everything over. Hmm. But you're still going to be spinning up that disk, so be very, very careful. I actually um, I, I popped an email to one of my friends who is uh, a full-out data recovery specialist uh, on your behalf. And, and I just said, you know, I expressed your email and said, you know, what would you do in a situation like this? Uh, and Phil, who uh, who does data recovery at PezDataRecovery.com, uh, P-E-S DataRecovery.com, if you're looking for data recovery services. i got to give the plug. He's a good guy. Um, he says, defragging, again, is, isn't going to help this situation. You should run a diagnostic on the drive. Just make sure that the drive is not failing or potentially failed. Uh, you can use, like if it's a Seagate drive, Seagate provides a tool. If it's Western Digital, they have a, a software tool as well, just to make sure that the drive is okay. All right. If you pass that test, then you can try check disk slash F. That's going to check the drive and fix the potential errors on it. And if it fails the diagnostic there um, before, you know, before you do a check disk or anything, you might want to try um, doing it uh, with, you know, getting into data recovery software, try to get the data mm. off of the drive. And he actually recommends a program called, uh, it looks like Easy Us, E-A-S-E-U-S, -E which is commercial software, but they do offer a free version. And I'll post show, uh, links in the show notes for episode number 228. But here it is, and if we go to products... This is what uh, my good friend is recommending. There's a free version. I believe it will only do up to one gigabyte of data, though. So you want to look at this, the stuff. But it's reasonable price, 70 bucks. This is like if you, if you still can't get data off of mm -hmm. that drive, okay? Fail safe. And the reason I wanted to show you that, Ease US, the reason I wanted to show you this is that it's been recommended by somebody who works in data recovery yes. and, and knows yeah. what they're talking about. I actually had a, a customer who brought in a flash card from her camera and the saddest thing this this is a very a very important flash card from her camera it had very important photos mm. on it okay and it, it was having trouble mm -hmm. and she got on the internet and downloaded some free data recovery software that she she didn't really know what she's doing she yeah, just yeah, thought yeah. okay data recovery I'll find a free version I'll mm -hmm. get something and here's the thing she did not write protect the disk Okay. Oh. Uh, an SD card has a yeah, little yeah, switch yeah, that allows switch you to lock it. The software oh. was not legitimate. She had no way of knowing. It looked like it was legitimate. Mm -hmm. She installed it on her computer. It scanned through her files, and it seemed to be doing something. And what that software was, in fact, doing is it overwrote every single sector really? of that card wow. with uh, a picture that looked like a hacker-esque, like, haha, oh, got ya kind of picture. No. So when you actually then oh. look at the f the the card, yeah, it's a whole thousands and thousands of copies 
of this picture that's like a ha ha got you hacker oh message. Oh my goodness. But because it had overwritten every single sector of the drive, data recovery is 100% impossible now. Oh. Because it had overwritten all hopes of ever being able to recover those files. The best thing mm-hmm. to do in a situation where you need to, where you may potentially need data recovery is stop using the disk, get it out of your system, write protect it if you need to, don't touch it. Because if you do, you've got a chance, yeah. just like that woman, to lose your data forever. That is awful. It's terrible. So Ooh. here's a piece of software that comes to us recommended. It's, uh, it's affordable, it does a good job, and uh, so I'll post links for that. Uh, in the show notes of episode number 228. And be wary of those pieces of software Yes. that, uh, mm. that you think may be legitimate. Don't just go out and Google <laughs> and type data recovery for my flash drive. <laughs> Bad good. idea. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. What a kick in the pants. Terrible thing to have happen. So thank you for the question. Thank and thanks to, uh, to Phil as well for uh, helping us with for the, the info. There. Yeah. And I've got more info coming up right now in the newsroom. Excellent. These are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. A crackdown on phishing scams has been announced by 15 of the top technology companies. Email providers such as Google and Microsoft will work with companies like PayPal and the Bank of America to improve um, authentication. Phishing attacks typically involve sharks, just kidding, (laughs) involve (laughs) scammers posing as familiar companies in an attempt to trick users into sharing personal information. This coordinated effort aims to make this more difficult. It will mean an agreed standard for authenticating legitimate emails arriving in inboxes of AOL, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo customers, and will verify messages from Facebook, PayPal, American Greetings, Bank of America, Fidelity, and LinkedIn. A new air defense system that can destroy enemy missiles traveling at supersonic speeds has been revealed by the Royal Navy. Sea Scepter missiles fired from warships will reach speeds of up to Mach 3 and protect um, an area of around 500 square miles. That's nothing. My, my razor is Mach 3. Uh, har har we are full of jokes tonight let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> the defense equipment minister peter luff says the development of this missile system is huge boost to the uk's world leading missile industry and once again proves our commitment to providing battle winning technology to our armed forces the head of navy uh, um, the head of the navy admirable sir mark stanhope added that this new weapon system will equip our um frigates Frigates. Frigates. I've never used that word before. To deal with the type of sophisticated missile threat expected in the coming decades. Cue ominous music, eh? Da-da-da. Like big missiles from big ships. It's a little scary for me. But he makes it sound like it's coming. It's coming. (laughs) Dun-dun-dun. Oh, and this is also what's coming, this story. Okay, Microsoft Office 15 officially made its debut as a technical Whoa. preview yesterday, available to a small number of early testers who will provide feedback that can influence the final release. And though the technical preview program is already f- uh, is already full, a beta of the new Office suite will surface for everyone to play with later in the summer. A Microsoft blog posted yesterday by PJ Huff uh, corporate vice president of the Microsoft Office division called Office 15 the most ambitious undertaking yet for the Office division. While not giving too many details, he simply said that the new suite will mark the first time that Microsoft will simultaneously update its cloud services, servers, and mobile and PC clients for Office, Office 365, Exchange, SharePoint, Link, Project, and Visio. We'll soon see what it brings and how Metro factors into the equation. Twitter has announced that it is now, or that now has the technologies to selectively block tweets on a country by country basis. Hmm. In its blog, Twitter said it could reactively withhold content from users in a specific country, but it said the removed content would be available to the rest of the world. Previously, when Twitter deleted a tweet, it would disappear worldwide. The decision has been criticized by the Freedom of Information Advocacy Group, Reporters Without Borders, and comes at a time when Twitter is in the process of expanding its global business. You can get these full stories online at our website at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our stellar community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. 
from the Category 5.TV newsroom. I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hillary. No problem. Tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by GardengateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, visit them at GardengateFarms.com. Also, you can download the free online massive multiplayer role-playing game, Planet Calypso, at cat5.tv slash calypso. And go get your free 5 gigabyte personal cloud from Pogoplug, cat5.tv slash Pogoplug. This is Category 5 Technology TV, so good to have you here. And our website is www.cat5.tv or category5.tv. We'll get you there. True say. Yeah. That, that's where it's at. This that is where it's is at. That is where it's at. This is it, folks. This is it. No getting around. The highlight it. of the week. <laughs> right here. Always new stuff happening. Always exciting stuff. We, you just never know what's going to happen next. That's why you got to tune in. Blah! See? Who saw that coming? Who knew? I didn't. Who knew? <laughs> and speaking of traveling to the future, we've got some technology tonight that is just, I mean, it's, it's exceptional. Blowing. Wow. It's pretty wild. Do you, do you have any issues where, I, I was diagnosed a couple years ago with ulnar nerve entrapment. It's, mm. a, it's an odd kind of like pinch nerve in the arm that causes the right side of my hand to go numb. Yeah, Mm. and it can be, it was when it was at its worst, and I've been going to chiropractic for a while, and it's been really helping, Mm. Uh, but when it's at its worst, it was really painful, and and clicking my mouse, even using my mouse, was really, really bad, so so I can really sympathize with people who are struggling with, you know, I I work in a job, I'm sitting at a desk, I'm a programmer, right, so I'm at my computer all the time, and what would you think if I could give you a device that would allow you to control your computer, so all of those mouse gestures and movements, just by glancing at what it is you want to click on. Well, sounds pretty wonderful, I'd say. Think about that for just a second, right? So tonight, what I want to show you, this comes to us from a company called Natural Point. It's called the Smart Nav. And it's branded as a, an ergonomic device. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, it's also, you know, it's good for... Uh, people who need to have assistive devices. Yes. Right? So from an ergonomic standpoint for someone such as myself, yeah, it's probably very helpful for me or if you're struggling with uh, with carpal tunnel syndrome or something that makes it so that using the computer is really tough, right? But then there's, there's uh, another group of people who, plain and simply, they want to use the computer, but maybe I don't have the mobility in my upper body or maybe I don't have the mobility in my arms. Mm-hmm. So here's a chance for you to actually control your computer just like normal, but without having to use a mouse, right? But what what do you use, Robbie? Well, what do you use? Well, I'll say a stylish baseball cap. Ah, look at that! And I'm going to sport it so you this all can new, see. Yeah, this is your new smart nav. I'll get you to close down your windows there so oh, that people yeah. can see what's certainly here, I'll, I'll kind of okay. Thank you. Just minimize here so that people can see so what's actually. So I have the hat okay, on you've got the my hat head. On. And what's actually happening here All, already, like instantly? It's pretty wild. I'm just, okay, this is like me trying to keep my head straight. And this is just me moving along. Do, 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 look at my arrow go. Look so that's actually Hillary's computer cursor. screen. This is for real, really happening. So I'm just, I'm just moving along here. And it's essentially like following my, my eye line, like with th- my head movement. Okay, so now what I'll get you to do, Hillary, is move your head physically all the way to the left like just kind of lean over to the left there okay move over to the right see what we're doing is we're calibrating okay now look up look down and now your mouse is calibrated okay your left windows key on your keyboard is in fact now your clicking device so why don't you, with your head, just point up to Firefox. This is the first time Hillary has ever used Yeah, I've this. never done this before. Okay, so go to, go to Firefox and just double-click your left Windows key on your keyboard. My left Windows key? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I wasn't looking. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, so double-click on that, bring up Firefox. Oh. There we go. As far as the experience goes. Cool. You, this is your, as I say, this is your first this time. This is my first time, this. for real. For real. Cool stuff. So the way that this actually works, I'm going to show you with this hand sure. camera, is there is a smart nav sensor, which is USB, and it uses infrared. 
And on the front of Hillary's cap is a, a little in, infrared sensor, which you, you can't really even see. But nope. There it is. It's built right in. Cool. So, I'm doing it. Doing it just and like it's that. pretty, it's easy to do. Like, uh, it's not like I'm cranking my head like, come well, on, well, once get you're over here. It's good. Which is really simple to do. Yeah, that didn't, it's that was nothing. You can find out more about this amazing device, SmartNav. Go to cat5.tv slash SmartNav, just like it sounds. Smart. S-M-A-R-T-N-A-V. Okay. There's a couple of different versions of the device. Now, there's the ergonomic version. There's the assistive technology version as well. Um, basically... What, what it comes down to. Now, what you're doing right now is using the Windows key on your keyboard. Yeah. I was wondering. That's your click, right? Is there a way to change that? There is, yeah. So oh. that's an assigned key that allows you to click using just that, pardon me, that one key. There are also other ways to do it. So they also have accessories. Okay. So this, for example, the Ergo Click, which is in the accessories section, if you visit that website, cat5.tv slash smartnav. And what this is is simply... Much easier clicking device, again, as, as an assistive technology. Right? Okay, it's like, see. It's like a jumbo size button mm -hmm. that you have under your hand, and you can just kind of push down. Okay, so that becomes your click. There's also foot pedals. There oh, are also, okay. uh, you know, multiple different types of clicking mechanisms that you can use. But, okay, so they call that a, an ability switch. Okay, so that allows you to click. There's also something that's called dwell clicking. Mm. So with the... The uh, accessible technology version of the hardware, which you'll find on their website, you'll see that it actually includes dwell clicking. And dwell clicking allows you to click simply by holding your head in a certain, you know, like you're pointing at something. You like, dwell on it, and it will click on oh, it. Oh, I see. If, if you just kept it there for yeah, essentially that's long exactly period of how time. it works. I see. I'm doing it right now. So I'll get you to remove the hat because I want to show you something sure. else that's really cool. So you know, you're in an office environment. You think, oh well. Sorry to mess up your hair too. It's okay, guys. It looks great. It's okay. I, you know, it looks great. Uh, you you can leave it on in a minute if you if you it's prefer. A, well, it's so cool. It's a pretty cool hat too. It's actually a nice hat. Mm -hmm. But uh, that aside, you're in an office where, yeah. really, okay, in my office, I'm not allowed to wear jeans. Um. I'm definitely not allowed to wear a baseball cap. Probably not. Guaranteed. Probably not. Okay. So what you do is you've got these kind of things that come with it. Okay. Mm. They're stickers. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these. I'm gonna take one. Just like that, okay? And it's just a it's just little a thing thumb. like that. Well, you can put it on your finger or whatever, but let's say you've got a favorite pen. Here I go. Oh. So I've just placed that yep. on my pen. Just like that, it's done. Right? Here's your pen. Thank you. And I'm going to let you... Cal calibrate it? Yeah. So now, Ooh. with the pen, Ooh. she's in fact able to control Ooh, I'm doing her mouse it. on the screen. I'm doing it. Look at me. Yeah, so you can actually use it with any kind of pointer. I was thinking, you know, I could even put it on my watch, and I could you just could. wave my hand and actually control my screen that way. You could. So these are, in fact, included, and you can get more of these. You can even buy a sheet of the reflective material uh, from the accessories uh, catalog on their website as well. So that, again, is cat5.tv slash smartnav. I really encourage you to check it out. Um, it's a fantastic product. It works exceptionally well. Uh, I think you 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 can attest to. Oh yeah, it's quite incredible. It's very. It seems like something I never could fathom. It's kind of sci-fi-ish, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of cool, and the control is actually very very good. Yeah. You're, you're not I'm, having to. It's not like I have to like counter like get over mm -hmm. here like you know move it around like um, excessively like mm -hmm. it's. It is. It's like as if you were drawing on a. True enough. Yeah. Like but a, it's in the middle of the air. It's like. Yeah. It's. Wow. Hard to kind of conceptualize, but it's pretty wild and accurate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her play with that after. I know. The show. I'm just like. Ah. The uh, the device starts at $399. Okay. It's unfortunately compatible only with Microsoft Windows. Hmm. So you have to be using a Microsoft Windows computer in order to make it work. Um, however, I do see that there is some growing support for it in. 
uh, kind of like open source communities who are trying to develop for Linux. Um, I think that you know if if the company understands that uh, that there is a demand for Linux for sure. users, I think that we will hopefully start to see some some pushing uh, by them. At this point, it's not too likely that we're going to see some actual official support for the Linux operating system, uh, let alone uh, Mac as well. Uh, but certainly, Linux is kind of out of the picture for the moment. But it works fantastically in Windows. Mm -hmm. Hillary's on Windows Seven there, and you can see yeah. that it's as an assistive technology, as an ergonomic technology, it's fantastic. Well, I think that's uh, it's very, very a unique way to accommodate. Mm -hmm. Like such, yeah, it's really cool. I'm really, I just want to keep playing. You're in love with it. <laughs> Admit it. I just want to keep playing. Admit it. Ooh. Okay, cat5.tv slash smartnav. Okay, check them out and look at the accessories that are available as well. Take a look. Get in touch with them. There's a toll-free number right on the website. You can call them. You can get more information. You can get orders, and they will ship worldwide. Cool. They do have dealers worldwide, but you can also order directly off of their website, cat5.tv slash smartnav. Do it. Check it out. Check that out. It's pretty rad. This is Category 5 Technology TV. So good to have you here. Nice to see you, and uh, great to see you. Thank you. It's yeah. good to be here. I you love Cat5. You know, I'm just... Cat5 loves you. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's a fun place to be because, you know, the jokes, the love, the laughter, the tech support. The jokes. They're amazing. The jokes have just... We've just been on a roll tonight, let me tell you. But it is a fun place to be. Chat room, wild, talking about <laughs> tech, talking about not tech. It's just, it's a fun, fun place. So you should check it out. Welcome to everybody who's joining us tonight mm -hmm. in our chat room, especially. We love to have you there. Nice to see so many people. We do. We Let's do. name drop. Chris Reich, I mentioned you off the top of the show. You we missed. Did. He walked in just after the, <laughs> just after the But plug. we legit You'll did. You'll have to rewind the time. Rewind. Rewind yeah. the time. Flip it and reverse it, yo. Oops. Are you clicking around? I right? accidentally it was clicking unknowingly. I was just I'm going to take the pen. <laughs> Sorry. Who knows what damage <laughs> I could do? Who knows Things what could happen? And she just formatted the better hard drive. Put, better put my hat back really. on. Yeah. Cool stuff. That's what you call cool beans, Hill. That is cool beans. I'm sorry I didn't drop a cool beans earlier. Cool beans. <laughs> I could really mess you up now. I know it. Dun, 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 That's dun, a dun. little confusing. Dun, 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 dun. If you had dun, enough dun, sticker dun, dun, things, dun, dun. you could put it like on One anything. One on each finger. Yeah. Multi-touch in the air. No, it doesn't really do that, folks. But you could do, I saw on the box, I think, not only the hat, but also glasses. Is yeah, that real? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to put it on your glasses, right? Like, would that be But you'd helpful, have to have maybe? a pretty wide frame. And like, what if you'd probably want silver frames. I guess. But I guess, really, if it's an assistive technology, not to go go back too far, but uh, if it's an assistive technology, I guess you, would, you wouldn't mind a dot on your frame. No. If it's going to help not. you use your computer, right? I think the hat looks good, though, so it, it's a good hat. I like it. Good hat. Pretty rad. Yep. So, yeah. But I'm just looking around thinking about all the cool things that I could stick one of those stickers to. And I know. I'm just looking. You could do some... Beer bottles? Serious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Waving it around. I don't know how good like, an idea is that on? is. What is going on? He's waving it around. Well, I don't know how oh, good an dear. idea that is. Yeah. Did it have to be empty? Well, yeah. I think. <laughs> I don't know. That can be arranged. Moving along. Lightsaber, Rob Gore says. That's a fantastic idea. You know what? Yeah. You're right. You could put on your little action figures. <laughs> you Al thinks that uh, ha having it embedded into your contact lens would be neat. That'd be like trippy. You'd be like... Might kind of mess with you. Your vision might be a little funky, yeah. but yeah. the way technology's going these days, it could happen. Could. Anything's possible, which is freaky, but awesome. What I find freaky... Is that you're you're sitting there talking away and her mouse is moving I know, around I'm here, like, folks. I'm like trying not. I'm She's got the magical hat on. Distracted by my hat head. Yeah. Ooh, Neat. look at me go! Look at me go! Oh boy. I'm navigating our website. I should pull up some cool things to look at. Yeah. Uh, like. Go for it. Okay, let me look. Like, like our testimonials. Like, we love hearing from people. C O O. Click it, Hillary. Click. it. Oh, I can't get it. I've dropped it. <laughs> you weren't pushing it. I wasn't right. looking at she the wasn't right looking at thing. The keyboard. She didn't oh, have it. man. Okay, look. Well, you're controlling it like a pro. I'm though, doing already. it. I will, this is my first time. Yeah, you'll get used Double to click. it. Double click. Double click. Oops, I might be pushing the wrong button. Yeah, you're pushing the wrong button. There, I did it. Sure. I did it. Just pushing the control key, folks. Sorry, I meant Don't to push. Don't hold it against oh. smart. 
Oh, oh no. What have I done? You I broke the internet. I broke the internet. Shoot the dog. Okay. Well, what I was going to pull up were examples of um, <laughs> some testimonies. <laughs> the mouse is that the, the, I know. My head's just... I got to keep my head still. <laughs> testimonies from viewers like you who say... This is this is great. We love your show. We like we like to hear from you. So some people tell us little tidbits about their homeland. Some people say what they like about the show, what they don't. But this is just excellent feedback for us. It gives us a chance to know what's working, what we can improve on, what you like, what you don't like. So drop us a line at um, the testimonial part on our p- web page. I have I, somebody said in the chat room, Robbie loves shortcuts. It's so true, because I actually have cat5.tv slash testimonial. As a It'll take you right to the form to send in a testimonial. Oh, it takes you right there. Oh, yeah, I see. Just like that. I didn't know that. Okay, I was going to tell cool. you this long-winded way to do it, but that's easier. short little URLs up in my brain. Well, that's great. That accessibility, ease of use, that's what we like to do. Make things exactly. easy. Why does it have to be complicated? Why does Why, the internet Hillary? have to be Why? complicated? I don't get it. <laughs> Not with Robbie around. He makes... We simplify. Well, you know what? I need that in my life. I need the simplicity. <laughs> so, leads us to say, drop us a line. We love to hear. We love your stories, your testimonials, your life. Thank you. That is all. Thanks, so. <laughs> I'm looking at the chat room here, folks, and yeah. uh, watching for your questions. Lots of chatting going on and just uh, hanging out and having a good time in the chat room. But uh, we've got about 10 minutes to the show here tonight, and I would just encourage you to you know, pop us a question. If you've got a legit question or pop us an email, live at Category5.tv. If you're watching but you're not in the chat room, uh, we welcome your, your question as well. That's also a way to get a hold of us You know, if you, if you watch mm-hmm. through RSS or if yes. you watch on the website or through YouTube. Uh, you're able to actually send us a question without... Uh, without having to be in the live chat room during the live show. Yeah, because not everyone can watch at 3 a.m., right? Exactly. Given the nature of your geographic position in the world. Exactly. Which we are more than happy to have you worldwide, so you can send us your postcards, P.S. Um, but seriously, you can email us questions any time of the day. It doesn't matter. And you can do so <laughs> by that subliminally posted address. Rewind time. Yep. Indeed. <laughs> But anyways, um, yeah, people worldwide, and it's pretty pretty wild and pretty rad. Mm-hmm. That's what I got to say about that. Keith Heaton in the chat room, who is uh, joining us for the first time live tonight, is wondering if we would ever do a PXE boot episode. So you'd like to actually boot from a PXE server or something like that, eh? Mm. Uh, I'd be interested to know exactly you know, what, what you're looking to do, Keith Heaton. Um, maybe pop us an email would be the best way to do it just so that I know, you know, what, what is it that you're wanting to accomplish? Because if I can help you, uh, I'd be happy to do that as long as our hardware allows. Now I may have to create like a virtual network or something like that, but we can, we can do something like that. Pop me an email. Okay. Live at category five dot TV. Um, just to give me more details as to what you're hoping to accomplish with that. Be happy to. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. good. That's a good thing. And that's also part of the thing is that we're very like I don't want to say consumer, but we are geared by the community. We are community driven. We want we, to accommodate our, the our community. Yeah. And so if you've some like a special little project or a special little something going on that we can like be a part of and help you or assist you in some way, then yeah, let's do it. Send us Send the it info. In. Yeah, we'll do when it it's together. Like that, it, it does help to have a bit of an yeah. outline as to, hey, like, this is what I'd like to do. Uh, can you help me? Can you walk me through it? Um, we'd love to do that for sure. Uh, I've got uh, Immaculate who joins us from Davenport, Iowa. Says, I am brand new, first time here. How is Debian Squeeze? I'm not a fan of Unity. Is it worth it? Mm. Check out my blog, cat5.tv slash blog. There I go with another one of those short ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easy accessible, so you don't have to look all over the website and be like, where is this blog he's talking it's about? It's really just the button that says Robbie's blog. It's okay. Not, it's not that well, hard, to I'm going to navigate my head to <laughs> find You're it. not even going to need a mouse anyway. She's I'm loving just going to like... She's clicking around la, 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 get, getting like around the go. internet. <laughs> uh, yeah, check out my blog, cat5.tv slash blog, because I talked about the step-by-step as to what I was doing, why I did it, um, to switch to Debian Squeeze. 
it's fantastic. It's actually very, very good. There are a couple of little idiosyncrasies because it's a different distro. Um, you need to know where to find things, and it helps to know the name of applications because when you're when you're so used to a simplified distro like uh, Ubuntu or one of its derivatives, they rename a lot of stuff. You know, like gedit becomes text editor. Well, if you don't know that it's gedit, then you might have trouble. You know, that's a that's one that's just an example. But when you need to install something, it mm-hmm. helps to know the actual application name. But I'm happy to help with that. I will be posting some follow ups as well on the uh, on the blog. But honestly, following the step by step of what I put there in my blog, um, I've had very very little uncomfortable situations with the dist- with the distro. Mm. Um, I've had a couple of things that I had to tweak. I had a couple of things that I needed to change. Um, but all in all, very very happy with Debian. Just Debian. Vanilla Debian, but I put in some nice stuff. I put in compis and all the different things to give me that really funky desktop. And it works very, very well. Very fast. Cool. And consistent. I find it's more consistent. Uh, 11.04 for me, I had to. I actually had to reboot on a regular basis. That, to me, is not the way Linux should be. And I think we all can agree that that's what we were trying to get away from when we switched to Linux. Maybe that was just me, but with Debian, I've never had that problem. So my system runs and runs, and I I get to work in the morning, and I think, oh, no, I'm going to have to reboot first thing. Well, no, it's working perfectly with no load, which was unlike Ubuntu 11.04. So so the experience has been much better than than the, the newer Ubuntus. And I, too, am not a, a Unity fan, at least, you know, I'll say I'm not a Unity fan, but it's really, they're changing the interface of the distribution to be more suited to future-ready devices, touchscreens, tablets, things like that, which I think is a great move, and it's, and it's going to happen, but right now it's too young. So there should be more work put into, in my humble opinion, I think there should be more work put into, okay, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to change everything so that it's ready for the future, but we need to make sure that our existing user base is still happy. But they're more thinking, okay, we're going to force them to change, and that way they're ready for it. But the real fact is, is they're not ready for us because it's too unstable, it's too finicky, and it's too big of a switch to make that kind of a jump. But it, because of the stability issues, I think that's the main thing, and the lack of feature set being based in GNOME 3, like the problems with multi-monitor support and stuff. It's just, it should not be the case. That shouldn't be the way that we would uh, approach our distributions. So Debian, you know, fantastic. Fantastic. Dave Maydu in the chat room agrees. Unity shouldn't be forced. Like I say, there should be easy way to regress that should be provided by Canonical. Do you want Unity? No. <laughs> that should be like an installation <laughs> option. Or at least, like, do you want to turn off Unity? Yes, <laughs> just for this session, you know. Hmm. Well, should be the way. Maybe, maybe it will be. Maybe in the future. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that, Poppy? They could. They could yeah. do it. Maybe show us. Show you us never some know. Love. You yeah. never know what could happen. You just yeah, don't. You know. never know. So when Unity is ready, I think it'll be an exciting thing. Just not yet. Fair enough. Mm. Gnome three, same thing. Linus uh, Torvalds will tell you. <laughs> what a crazy thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hilarious. I can't believe the show is almost over, Robbie. I, I was just looking at the clock and I was like, oh my, what's going on? Why does the time fly so? Because we have so much fun. So much fun. And time flies when you're having fun, they say. <laughs> and I believe it. I'm living it right here. Dave Maydu says that uh, he may go with XFCE. That's a different desktop environment. That's what I did. I, I hmm. was, uh, ever since 11.04 came out, so last April, up until when I just switched to Debian, I was running 11.04 with XFCE because I couldn't do the, the Unity thing. I gave it a chance. I gave it a very fair chance, but it didn't work for me. So I did do XFCE, but I did still find, because of the issues with, uh, with Ubuntu, I ended up going to Debian. Not unhappy about that choice. But yeah, time does fly, eh? Time's up, folks. Unless you got one of those cool YouTube time machines. Which we've yeah. been talking about here on the show. Yeah. So do uh, check out our website this week, uh, category5.tv, and you'll yes. notice that this, episode number 228, is actually being launched in YouTube. 
but it looks, you know, it's all part of our website. It's fully mm-hmm. integrated. So very fantastic stuff. But here's something that's really cool. As you look over the show notes of episode number 228, you'll notice that some of the items in the show notes, for example, are, are speaking about the smart nav device. You can actually click on that in the show notes, and it will start the video at that point. Oh, yeah. like chapter markers. Kind of like a chapter marker, where you can just skip right yeah. to the point, you know, if you, if you want to skip over... Yeah one particular thing and just get right to to a particular feature uh, you'll be able to do that so we will be progressively cool. enhan- you know expanding yes. that kind of feature of our website um, as we grow and uh, so check that out with episode number 228 and moving forward sounds good i'm yeah. all in exceptional well, great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for having nice me. To see you. And thank you, everyone, for watching and tuning in and for your questions and your chatter in the chat room, your emails, your tweets. Tweet us. Do it all. Get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Good point. Tweet us at Category 5 TV. There it is, just below Hillary there. Do it. And we'll hear from you next week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Take care, everybody. See ya. Thank you.